Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, from the Chew, celebrity chef Carla Hall is here with fun and delicious holiday cookie recipes. And she's headed to the tree to unwrap even more amazing surprise gifts as our holiday gift grab continues. Plus, Wendy's got you covered with all of today's juiciest hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. for the fabulous gifts <laughs> under the Wendy tree. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here regardless. <laughs> so, how about Miley Cyrus and Patrick Schwarzenegger? Oh. Well, apparently Miley's parents are pissed that Maria is not embracing Miley as Patrick's new girlfriend. Oh. Well, I think most of us would feel that way about our kids. You know, our kids might not be perfect, but you're not the one to, go, to call out and say, your daughter's not good enough for my son. You know? Um, Arnold so far likes the idea that these two are together, or really doesn't have anything to say, like a lot of men. <laughs> uh, but, but mom is on it, and the thing is, um, Maria, don't worry, these two aren't getting married. I mean, they're, they're still young, although... Miley was engaged before, so she does have that mindset of somebody who might care to get married when she's younger. But it takes two to have that mindset. And I don't, I don't picture... I just don't picture... How old is he? 21. 21. That's right, he's still in college. You know what I mean? And he's a Kennedy. He's got plenty of tail to get with before he... <laughs> before he, uh, you know, before he uh, settles down and gets married. I think that Miley's parents should take the high road, though, and not say anything. I mean, you know, as a mom, you know you would want to say something to the other mom. Like, what do, you, what do you mean you think that my daughter is not good enough for your son? Who do you think you are? <laughs> you know? Um, a Kennedy? Uh, <laughs> so what? Um, um, I wouldn't worry about this too much, Maria. And remember, the more you protest about who you don't want your kids to date, the more they would want to date that person. <laughs> but I know one thing. I never really thought about this until I was asked by my staff earlier when we were having our Hot Topics meeting. Um, they said, Wendy, could you date somebody whose mom didn't like you? I'll be very honest with you. No. No. I, cu I couldn't unless he either A, does not have a real good relationship with his mom to begin with, or B, can't stand his mom's guts. <laughs> or C, her opinion never mattered up until now, so why should it matter at this point forth? You know, but if you're like a regular mom, like, I personally, I, I dated a guy whose mom looked down on me. This was many years ago. I was like maybe 22 years old, you know. Um, he had a very, very nice career, and, and, you know, I was like this lowly DJ lady. You remember back in the day when there was 98.7 Kiss, and I did the, I used to do the traffic and dish the dirt in the morning? Oh, yeah. So that was back... But that was back in like, that was back in maybe 2000 or 1990, uh, 1989 or something like that, you know? So I was just getting my career going on. The hours were rough, you know? Um, that was back when girls wore Timberlands with a baseball hat and, and the pony hair. You know, Mary J. Blige, real love. What's the 411 hun look? You know what I'm talking about. We all dressed like that, you know, the Carhartt jackets and, you know? 
And this guy's career was a little bit different than mine, so I was able to be, you know, chillaxed in, in, for the most part and run back and forth to the city all hours of the night because I was, it was a grind. You know, when you're in, in your beginning years of your career, you don't choose your hours. You go when the hours are chosen for you and you grind. That's what you do. But the mom looked down on me. He was black, but not black. They were like, block. <laughs> Your laughter makes me think that you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, there's black people, and then there's block people. <laughs> well, they, they were real block. <laughs> and she, they, look, they looked down on me like, you know, my career was a nothing. They probably aren't saying that now. Yeah. But... You know, I, I knew from that point with the mom not really liking me and then he was an only child, which made it even worse, you know, the only one to concentrate on. I just knew that it wouldn't be anything more than a few great dates off his expense account. <laughs> and, and then I'd be moving on. I could not date somebody whose mom didn't at least tolerate me. You, you know, she doesn't have to love me, but at least tolerate me and be a good enough actress not to let me know that you don't like me. Clap if you could not date somebody whose mom didn't like you, clap. Interesting. <laughs> Horrible. But, yeah. So, guess who's giving Teresa advice over in Jersey on prison? <laughs> Apollo. <laughs> well, first of all, I, listen, listen. The article's in In Touch, in, in Touch magazine, and, um, he gave her quite a few tips on how she should handle herself, but I only broke off a few of these tips. And I, by the way, I think that this is good, Apollo. And I have another suggestion for you after this. <laughs> okay, a tip number one. Keep yourself, right, keep to yourself at first and don't act like you're better than anyone. Well, I think that this is great advice for uh, Teresa because Teresa is less than smart and Teresa... <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Teresa is the type, just based on what we've seen through the TV, who would go into the prison and feel like she's better than the other people in there, you know? Uh, you know, she's going to that orange is the new black prison. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, um, that's where Lauren Hill was when she did her caper. Um, wait, no, she didn't pay her taxes. That's like a caper. Uh, she, when she did her caper, who else was there, Martha Stewart? Leona oh, Leona Helmsley was there. Remember the Daily Departed Leona Helmsley? She was there. But I think that Teresa, she comes off as the type who would think that she's better than somebody. So why should she have to scrub a toilet or scrub the floor? So, so far, so good with the advice, Apollo. Let's see what else you tell her. Number two. It's cold in here. Uh, make sure someone will bring your children to visit and remember to mail them letters telling them how much you miss and love them. Aww. Well, having children visit in prison is an individual thing, so I don't know whether Teresa cares for her children to see mommy behind bars. But I do th think that this thing about remembering to mail them letters is an excellent um, thing. And... Here's the last tip I'm gonna give you that, that Apollo gave her, but there are many more tips. There are like a lot of tips. Um, eat the prison food. Now this, <laughs> now listen, Apollo, good, good advice. The reason why he says eat the prison food is because even though it tastes terrible, you've gotta keep your strength up. He didn't say for what, but I'm assuming just in case you have to fight, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and he says, he says, you know, when the food comes out, eat mostly the vegetables, stay away from, you know, the, the, the starchiness because otherwise you can gain, you know, a few pounds. Like when I saw the brat at um, the Soul Train Awards, it was so funny. Brat, we had such a good time, me and you, talking and yucking it up backstage. So, you know, brat was like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at her and she's like, yeah, yeah, Wendy, I know I gained a few pounds. Prison food is fattening. Now, she didn't look bad. I didn't even say anything, but it's like she... I guess she thought that that's what I was thinking, but Brat, that's not what I was thinking. But, yeah, she gained a few pounds, but she still looks terrific. And all he's saying, um, Teresa, is that eat something, you know? And also, um, Apollo, I think you need to capitalize on your, or on your career as a criminal. And... <laughs> This is only a one-hour show. I've got, to, I've got to get to my point right away. 
I think you should capitalize on your career as a criminal, and when you get out, you need to write a book on your experiences in jail, and at the end of each chapter, you need to have tips, because more and more, and don't laugh, more and more people these days are going to jail for various things. We all know people who've done time in the clink. <laughs> Clap if you know people who've done time. That's what, that's what I'm saying. And, and me too, me too. And I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like these days, it's not just about murdering, you know, and molesting. It's about stupid stuff, like maybe you didn't pay your taxes, or, you know, there, there, there's there reason, people are going to jail for all kinds of reasons right now, and I think that doing a, a, a book, not a manual, not a pamphlet, <laughs> but a book on how to survive jail and give some experiences and some tips. Listen, I don't know Wendy Feldman personally, but I do know that, that that's Teresa's uh, crisis manager person. Um, who Teresa ended up firing. Well, it turns out Wendy was in jail for white-collar crime back in the day. And so Wendy was the one who was advising Teresa, you know, on what to do. I, Wendy's making a career of it, Apollo. Why not you, too? Yeah. So Ryan Seacrest is single again. Aww. Well, you know, he is quite the catch. That Ryan is. You know, he's been dating that. He had been quietly dating a model named Shayna uh, Taylor for over a year. Quietly, except for us, because we knew. We, we've, been <laughs> we've been telling you about it, you know. They dated. They went away someplace far in another country with Ryan's parents during a, for a vacation. Um, he confirmed they called it quits the other night at the Jingle Balls concert. Yeah, somebody asked him about, you know, like, what he was doing for the holidays or, you know, I guess, is he single? And he said that he's single. Well, I think that this is terrific. He probably ran the girl off. Now, Ryan, look. <laughs> no, I like Ryan Seacrest. I, I, I told you many times I like Ryan Seacrest, but I have to call it the way I picture it in my mind. In my mind, mind you. <laughs> in my mind, I picture that when you meet Ryan Seacrest, it's all wonderful because, you know, he's got Hollywood in a smash. Um, you know, he speaks nicely. He loves his mother. You know, all the things that, you know, I guess you like in a guy. Um, he works hard. He makes plenty of money. He throws you his American Express black card. You spend all day at the store. You know, he doesn't ask you to show him receipts because he, he'll make more. <laughs> but the thing about dating Ryan, and Shana dated him for um, uh, two years, I think that after you've dated somebody like Ryan for six months, the, um, the ether wears off. And all of a sudden, you realize that he's never around. Like, he's never here to hold me tight at night. And I think that he doesn't respect my career. And I think that he just might want me to be dutiful. <sighs> Not that Robin McGraw is dutiful, but we see at the end of our beloved Dr. Phil's show, you know how Robin sits there at that chair, which I, I adore, by the way. You, Robin's playing her position. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> Listen. She sits at the chair. He says goodbye to us through the TV. He trots down the aisle. He grabs the little lady's hand, and they walk off like a happy couple. She's played that position for many years to the point now where, you know, I guess she's gone to him and said, look, Phil, I have stuff that I want to accomplish in life, too, and I'm going to do it. So now, you know, she's got, I think, her skincare thing, and she writes books. In other words, she does other things, but her main thing is to be sitting in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and get up and hold my hand and, and walk away. And I, there are a lot of women who couldn't do that, you know, but there are some women who could do it. Let's get back to Ryan. <laughs> because this is really about Ryan and Shayna. In my mind, Ryan Seacrest is the type of boyfriend and eventually a husband who does not want his wife to do anything except for take care of the house, you know, manage the house, manage the children, and, and be ready, because I'm coming by, I'm going to send a car to pick you up at 7 o'clock. We've got to be at the Oscars by 8. And I want you to wear the dress that I laid out for you. <laughs> In my mind!
that might have been the demise of what happened with, with he and Juliana Huff. Remember the girl from Dancing with the Stars? They dated for a few years, but I think the ether run, um, you know, wears thin. She probably, in my mind, was probably like, I want a career. Okay, this Ryan Seacrest thing, this started out to be really great when we were together, getting to all the parties, and I'm meeting everybody, and I got the best clothes, threw out all my old clothes, because now I got his credit card for new clothes, and I drive the best cars. Oh, wait, I'm driven whenever I want. But after a while, for some of us, we want our own identity. Yeah. And, yeah. and as we can see with Juliana, what ended up happening was, you know, they broke up, but now she's not just on Dancing with the Stars. She's at the judge's table. In other words, steady work without having to hurt her ankles on Dancing with the Stars. And she's still got that proactive thing going on. And goodness knows what else. But the point is, is that I think Ryan Seacrest might need a little woman, you know, a, du a dutiful little woman, and not some of us strong-minded, pig-headed, hot-headed women <laughs> who think we know it all. <laughs> And I mean that in a good way. A lot of men can't deal with an independent woman, and that's fine. Um, Jennifer Aniston is getting the ultimate revenge on Angelina Jolie. No, let's just give her a clap, because, you know, poor Jennifer. <laughs> poor, long-suffering Jennifer Aniston. Anyway, so just the other day I was telling you that they were going to have to be seeing, these two were going to see each other all through the um, award season because they're both um, being highly touted to win awards for stuff. Well, the SAG Awards and Golden Globe Award nominations are out and Angelina was snubbed for both. Oh. Clap it like you mean it. And Jen was nominated for both. Yeah. I know! I know. <laughs> Which means that they will not be running to each other at those two award shows because Angelina wasn't nominated. Yeah. <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking <laughs> that Jen needs this win a lot more than Angelina. Angelina has been winning ever since she stole Jen's husband <laughs> and had Jen's kids with the husband, right? And then went on to be a humanitarian. And I don't know about you, she's, she's worn me down. Like, I used to not care about this Angelina Jolie because I'm the wife and I don't dig a man stealer. But she, I told you, I was just telling you this the other day. Were you watching? I was telling you, she has worn me down. She's a lovely woman. Sometimes, oh God, Jen, I hate to say this, but sometimes you do marry the wrong person and you don't realize it until you meet the right person. I used to not really understand that, except, you know, Angelina Jolie, she, they, Brad might have married the wrong person, Jen, you. And... <laughs> <laughs> but then she went on and married the right person. And to make it worse, just when we thought that they weren't going to get married, they get all those kids, and then they have that low-key wedding over the summer. So, really, Jen has not won since she won Brad Pitt the first time around. So, let her have this win this time around. Right? And isn't it convenient that, um, that, that Angelina Jolie has come down with the chicken pox? And so now she can't be out promoting and flitting around town and doing stuff. Oh. Why, it wouldn't surprise me at all if she was at home doing perfectly well, watching us as we talk about her right now, <laughs> filing her nails. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me at all if she does not have the shingles, but she, or excuse me, the chicken pox. <laughs> but the chicken pox lead to shingles when you're older. That's what they say on the commercial. Anyway. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me, though, if she doesn't have chicken pox. She's just too egomaniacal to leave the house and have to face the fire that she wasn't nominated for yet another... Oh, oh these Hollywood people, I'll tell you. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Jen.
You know I love my monthly magazines, but they can be expensive for your budget. So I buy them and share with you what's inside so you can save a dime. It's time for Wendy's Got You Covered. Head it. <laughs> So, Nicole Kidman is on the cover of Elle magazine. And inside, she opens up about her marriage to Keith Urban. And she says, I didn't, you guys, I didn't realize, did you know that she married him after dating him for less than a month? Less than a month. I mean, that's worse than Chloe and Lamar. <laughs> right? They knew each other for at least a month. Nicole said, I'm spontaneous. I jump in. I kind of like getting married and then getting to know each other. I know that sounds incredibly strange, but to me, it's a more natural process. <laughs> now, look, don't try this in your real life. Okay. Um, first of all, after escaping, I mean, divorcing Tom Cruise. <laughs> When a woman has been in a marriage with a lot of ch challenges, shall we say, um, and a lot of, um, I don't, just a lot of challenges, I think that sometimes she gets out of that marriage and she does either one of two things. Either she dates often and dates a lot and, and just embraces the real her, or she's so inexperienced, maybe, and so sh uh, shell-shocked by what she just got out of that she virtually doesn't want to date around, so she, and I was trying my best, me and my Hot Topics team, I was saying, all right, well, who did she date after Tom Cruise? File a report, figure it out. And we figured out nobody, right? It seemed like, now she could have dated, it's just that we didn't catch her. It, it seems like she went right from Tom Cruise to Keith Urban, and they only dated for a month, and then they got married. I think that this is nuts. But it's interesting because they've been married for over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah, over 10 years. But I also feel like this is sometimes a more mature person's way of doing things. If you've already had your kids and you're of a particular age, you know, 30, I guess 35 plus, and you've been scarred in romance and scarred in life, sometimes you just jump right in. Of course, it helps when you don't have a marriage like the rest of us do. You know how the rest of us are. We sleep in the same bed every night regardless. You wake up together every day. You're in the house to fight. You know, he's not running off, to, you know, in a rock band where he's touring for a month. So he's, you know, without me, I'm not running off to a modeling shoot because I'm not a model. <laughs> you know, I, I just feel like um, in the celebrity world, most of those marriages aren't real marriages like that mess that you and I do because they're always traveling and doing something. So if you're only with somebody, or like if you're a traveling salesman, if you're a regular person, but if you're a traveling salesman or a long distance truck driver, it's like, I mean, I get that, but that's a different kind of marriage than a marriage where you're together 30 days out of the month, 365 <laughs> days a year. I mean, that's, that's the true test if you really love somebody, dirty drawers and all. You, you understand? Anyway, um, oh, okay. And then Miranda Lambert is on the cover of uh, Marie Claire magazine. Yeah. She's cute. Her husband's hot too, that Blake Shelton. I like his personality and his size. Anyway, inside she's talking about her 20 pound weight loss. Now, you know, we met her. She was on um, a reality show called Nashville Star. Do you remember? She, she was a reality girl. And she was heavier like this. That's not so heavy. But she apparently, you know, came to the Hollywood thing. And so now she's lost, you know, what looks like quite a bit of weight. But it's only 20 pounds. But here's what she says about the weight loss. And then uh, I've got an opinion. I always do. <laughs> <clears throat> when you have to walk out there in front of thousands of people, it does feel good to know that your bleep's not jiggling. I'm just like anybody else. Insecure and scared of looking bad or being criticized, but everybody's making this big, giant thing about it. Why do we care? She's talking about her weight loss. Miranda, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why people care. First of all, you've got millions of adoring fans, and 
everybody's always curious about weight loss, especially coming up to the first of the year. Everybody's always looking to lose 3, 5, 10, 50, 75, 100 pounds. <laughs> and and if, if we can give tips to one another, that's why they care. What, when, they, when you should be concerned is when they stop asking, because that means it might look like you're putting it back on. <laughs> but um, anyway, everybody, and that's Wendy's Got You Covered. That's all. Listen, we've got more great show for you. Two, the delightful Carla Hall is here. Carla's going to show us how to whip up some yummy holiday treats. And she's going under the Wendy tree to, get, uh, to grab a gift from them that you can get it on, too. But up next, everyone, it's time for Celebrity Lookalike. So don't go far. We've got a stocking stuffed with the juiciest hot topics. Super juicy. Just want a Christmas kiss? Gene Simmons brings the Jingle Bell Rock and turns up the holiday party with our gift grab. You guys are going home with it. Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. For celebrity lookalikes, our first celebrity lookalike comes from Maria G, who watches the Wendy Show here in New York on WNYW, Staten Island. Uh, Maria says that everyone thinks that she looks like Selena Gomez. So here's the real Selena Gomez, and let's take a look at Maria. <laughs> they think that you look like her. I think that you could be first cousins. First cousin, you're, you're equally as cute, by the way. Uh, first cousins, though, not look-alike. <laughs> Tell me. All right, our next celebrity look-alike comes from uh, Carissa E., who watches The Wendy Show on WOFL in Orlando, Florida. Carissa thinks that she looks like Kerry Washington. I think that this is a first. All right, here's the real Kerry. Now, let's take a look at Carissa. <laughs> Clap if you think she looks like her. Clap if you think she's equally as, as, as adorable. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't be offended, Carissa. Nobody thinks that you look like her, though, but you're really, really cute. No, but you're really cute. <clears throat> Our next celebrity, that's how we're going to do it. We'll do it with clapations, okay? And Suzanne, you keep your hands to your sides. Our next celebrity lookalike comes from Stephanie P., who watches The Wendy Show on WSOC in Charlotte, North Carolina. Stephanie says that her brother Rodney looks like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So let's take a look at the real The Rock. And now, let, wait, hold on, no. Now let's take a look at Rodney. Not one person? Well, then their feeling is equal to the feeling in our Hot Topics meeting. I think that you look like third cousins or something. Or, oh, hell, all bald black men don't look alike. How about that? <laughs> but Rodney, you're cute. Thank you, Rodney. All right, our next celebrity lookalike comes from Wade D., who watches The Wendy Show on KMYU in Highland, Utah. Wade thinks that his sister looks like Blake Lively, who's pregnant. Let's take a look at the real Blake. She's so cute. All right, now, remember, by clapation, let's take a look at Wade's sister. Um, um, yeah, there she is. Okay. The, okay. The problem is, is that, and they don't think that you look like her either. I think that you could be fourth cousins, distant cousins. Here, no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. But the segment is called Celebrity Lookalike, not Celebrity Looks Similar To. <laughs> so if we retooled the name to Celebrity Looks Similar To, do you think she looks similar to Blake Lively? Yeah. Okay. We need to talk about that for season seven. Maybe we change it, <laughs> Celebrity Looks Similar To? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys. All right, here's our last one. Uh, it's from Desiree M., who watches The Wendy Show on WNYW in Passaic, New Jersey! <laughs> Desiree thinks that she looks like Shannon Doherty from 90210. All right, here's the real Shannon Doherty. 
And let's take a look at Desiree. I, I see a similarity there. Thank you very much, everybody. If you or somebody that you know looks, looks like a celebrity, <laughs> Or similar to, it's fun to look at those two, but if, if you look like a celebrity, no, seriously, share with us at wendyshow.com. Up next, we're making holiday treats with my girl, Carla Hall. Keep it here. And she's here today to help us make some sweet treats for the holidays. Please give it up for Carla Hall. Oh, Wendy. Thanks. I, I'm loving you. Thank I am you. loving you. Thank and you. you know, the holidays is all about sweets. Right? Wait, but before we do that, let me yeah. just show everybody your sweet pants. Wait, come on. Like, like look at her outfit. Like, what? They're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. Okay, so um, what are we making today? So we're making a couple of shortbread cookies. I have a potato chip shortbread, and I have a shortbread with chocolate chai ganache. And I'm going to show you how to take that same dough and make it chocolate, actually a chocolate cookie. So easy. Okay, the, the idea of potato chips and a cookie is delectable. Right? Okay, so let's get started. All right, you'll cook. We're listening to what you're saying, and then I'll continue this line of questioning. So we have our butter and our sugar here, and I'm sure all the all the um, the recipes are going to be on your website. Yes, right? of course. All right, so all the butter and the sugar is here, and so we just um, we just cream that. And you don't want to over whip your um, butter and sugar because it makes a tough cookie. And then we're going to add in the flour. Just in there like that. The mixer's going sort of at medium speed, not mm -hmm. getting on us. Mm -hmm. And then we put in a little bit of vanilla. And then all those crumbs in the bottom of that potato chip bag yes! that say come up to your arm yes! and get y'all greasy looking. Yes! Don't do that. Just put them in a bowl and put them in the cookies. Mm -hmm. That goes in there like this. Oh, and it wow. just comes together. It is so simple. It is so simple. And then we have our dough here. I always use a scoop, Wendy, because the scoop is all about making them all the same, same size. size. Okay, and can we talk about the cookie exchanges? Girl, uh, have you been to a cookie exchange? My mother used to do them every single year. She probably still does do them. And I bet your mama took good cookies, but you guys don't take any store-bought cookies to your no. cookie exchange. No, 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 that's not what you're supposed to do. Like, no. holiday cookie making at my house growing up in Jersey was always a big deal. We make the thumbprint cookies, yes. the rum balls, the rum, the rum and, balls. and roll them in the flour, I mean, the, um, the powdered sugar and yes. stuff. Yeah, my mother, yeah, she's a real artist with that. It's all about that. So I took, I took a scoop of dough. I'm going to roll it in a little bit of flour here just so that it's not going to... Um, this, this has the potato chips already in it? Uh, no. Potato chips. Oh, potato chips. Yes. Yes, there's potato okay. chips there. I smash them with a, a, a bowl or anything. Yes. Right? And then I bake them off. Here they are right here because you know magic of television. Mm. Mic is all falling. All right. So I have them here. Oh, your microphone oh. fell yeah, off? Yeah, it fell off. It's all right. I'm stuck in my pants. Can I taste one before you? Can, yeah, um, you can I'm, taste it before the, the uh, extra chips. Oh, they're telling us to speed it up. Okay, wait. Right? Mm, right? Good. And then I put more chips on the side. Okay, okay so that's you see well. how she did that? Right. Okay, so the next cookie. You all know you love tea. I have cream here. I'm making a shortbread with a chocolate ganache. I have heavy cream in here, like four bags of chai tea. I'm going to pour, take that out and put it into my chocolate. What's a ganache? A ganache is exactly that. Cream and chocolate, and you just, just whip it like this. It's, it's all mixed and nice. I bake these chocolate, these shortbread cookies here. I'm putting this in the center, just like this, Wendy. Mm -hmm. I, you know what this is? These are like the Milano cookies from, um, right. you know. Mm. Okay, right, the Milano mm. cookies. And then look, you just drop it in some more chocolate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So simple, so simple. All right, so then that's done like you that. You and your partners are so good at what you do. And I know you and I were talking about your opening a restaurant yeah. yes. later this year. Opening a restaurant. So are we going to... That I really love. So we're talking like the spring of next year and soul maybe food. like early soul food, um, Nashville's hot chicken and southern sides. I know all of our sides are going to be vegetarian. It's going to be the bomb, Wendy. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Is it going to be anywhere near our studio? It's going to be like downtown. Yes. Like, well, well, ish. Ish. Okay. Ish. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, I can't wait so for look, that. So mm. I took that dough, and here are the, the ingredients for shortbread. Oh. Butter, sugar, salt, flour, vanilla. That's all we have. But then here I have chocolate. I, so I made it in chocolate. It's like block Santa. <laughs> all right. Block Santa. Not, not black Santa. Block Santa. I, you know what? I'm glad that we're doing this with something other than gingerbread. I, well, that's it. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. You just, you can decorate it however you want. Well, Wendy, while I'm decorating this, I decorated one right here. That's yours. <laughs> Thank you. That's the boobies. And then this is mine with no boobies at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but see, what's so nice about it, you make them into whatever you want. So here, come, come on, pick up your thing, Wendy. Are you eating already? Yep. Yeah, no. We're not at the cookie exchange. The potato chip cookies are really good. All right, so here I have just a piping uh -oh. bag and the royal icing, which you can take meringue powder or you can take white icing. And you can take any of these little candies. And then you just, if I wanted a red fro one time, so we're here, I can do it right now. The thing is, is that as a mom now myself, I'm not into baking cookies. I'm the one to buy the cookies for the bake sales and stuff. But I do have to say that this was always a bonding experience with me, my mother and my sister yes. during the holidays. And I miss that I'm not, that I don't do it myself. But you but can call me to bake your cookies for your cookie exchange. Thank you. <laughs> well, Paula, yeah. it's been wonderful seeing you again. It's so great seeing you, and I love coming here because you're so much fun. Thank you, Carla. And these recipes are all going to be on yeah. wendyshow.com. Everything is really very delicious. Um, what did you say? She, oh, you, oh, that's right. Carla's sticking around because she's got to go under the Wendy tree. So keep it here. Thank you. Everybody thinks I wear a wig, and I don't. <laughs> Don't call him a Grinch. Donald Trump brings juicy celebrity apprentice stories. Ooh, it's like Christmas came early. And get wrapped up in the coolest winter coats. I love this! Thursday on an all-new Wendy. We're kicking off the holidays Wendy style. It's our holiday gift grab. And this year, we've got bigger and better surprises. Oh! And more chances for you to win at home. All this week. Whether you've been nice or even a little naughty, unwrap all the details on my Facebook page. Carla's uh, not going to color her hair anymore, and she's going totally gray. What? Snow Simber? Yep, yep. I love it. So anyway, we're back. Carla H Hall is here, everybody, and it's time for our holiday gift grab. So go under the Wendy oh, tree. Okay. This is not just any frame. This is a gorgeous picture frame from our friends at Olivia Regal. Their frames are inspired by vintage jewelry with handset Swarovski crystals. And guess what, studio audience? You're all going home with this picture frame. It's valued at $200. What? Yes. Oh. This is gorgeous. That's gorgeous. And it will agree with my silver. Okay, and let, let's see what else we have okay. here, Carla. Oh, you know who that is. Okay. Okay. What? This, this is a very big deal right here. This is the Harley Pasternak Power Blender by Sultan. If you're not familiar with Harley, Harley happens to be a highly profiled celebrity trainer. His affordable blender crushes, blends, prepares smoothies, hot soups, and sauces in minutes. It's available at Cold on Col at Colds.com and Bed Bath and Beyond. And it retails for $250. But studio audience, you're all going home with Harley. And for our at-home viewers, if you'd like a chance to get at the train or the Harley, just go to my Facebook page for your chance to uh, get one too. Carla, happy holidays. Oh, and thank you so much. Thank oh. you. That's a hootie ho ho for everybody. Uh, always nice to see Carla Hall. Make sure you watch her and the gang on the Chew every weekday. Check your local listings. Ask Wendy is next. Yeah. Are you familiar with this? Watch The Wendy Show whenever you want on my YouTube channel. Hot topics, celebrity interviews, and of course, my legendary after show. It's all on YouTube. Subscribe today.
everybody except for you. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. How can I help? So my name is Kim, and I have a holiday party every year where a I invite party. all my friends, all my family. But I really want to invite my cousin to this party, but I don't want to invite her husband. He has a bad attitude. He eats all the food. <laughs> and <laughs> I just don't really want him around. Wendy, please help me. How do I tell my cousin I want her there, but I don't want her husband there? When you saw me just go like this, I was looking to see if you were wearing a wedding ring. No! Because if, if you were, you would know the answer to this question. Yeah, he has to come. He's got to come. Okay. And here's the thing. You put up with him for one, one day per year, and you see your cousin besides. No matter how much champagne you drink, do not... Please don't talk to your cousin about this at the party. I try not to. Or, and don't talk to him about the party. Just let him eat up the food. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know what I mean? Just just one day, okay? But you can't split up couples for the holidays. Okay, thank okay. you, Wendy. You're welcome. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. How can I help? Okay, Wendy. So I've been dating this guy for six months. Yeah. He has two kids, mm -hmm. seven and ten. I have none. So every time he has them over, he never invites me over. And two, he, when I do see him with his kids, he never introduced me as his girlfriend. Should I be concerned? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How old are you? 27. What are you doing with a guy with two kids? It's tough, Wendy. <laughs> not really. See, people think that all men are in jail or gay. They're not. There are so many qualified men out there to date you that don't have kids. You don't need a 27-year-old young lady. What do you do for a living? I'm a public health analyst. See? Uh, that sounds very fancy. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, no, this is my opinion. This is bigging you up. A 27-year-old girl with a fancy job does not need to be dealing with a man with twins. I'm sure he's a perfectly lovely man, as many men are with twins. But I just feel at 27, if you were my daughter, I would not want you dating a guy with twins or kids. So this conversation is moot as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Thank you. All right. Up next, everybody, I challenge an audience member to a game of Race the Clock, so don't go far. This is Meredith, and she's a uh, college professor from Georgia. Wow. Meredith, How you doing? you've got 30 seconds on the clock. Don't help her. Um, um, all right, since it's the holiday season, I want you to name four of Santa's nine reindeer and go! Okay, Dancer, Prancer, um, Donner, uh -huh. and um, how about Blitzen? Good! Sending you to the fabulous Palm Restaurant here in New York City. Oh the steak is sumptuous. Thank we'll be right so back. Much. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, you know what? time today. Carla Hall, I love you. My co-host, my studio audience, I adore you. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to have some fun with legendary rock star Gene Simmons. He's going to stop by. We're going to talk on the couch. It's going to be good. I've got you with the hot topics too. I love you for watching today and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye.